Hello, everybody. I'm Scott Wilkinson with the Pacific Crest Trail Association, and we are about two weeks away from the start of the 2021 hiking season. And many of you have had a lot of questions about this year's season, particularly with regard to long distance permits and all of the ways that the COVID-19 pandemic could potentially impact the hiking season. Um, with me here today is Togan Kaposa, who is acting PCT administrator for the U.S. Forest Service. And I also have Justin Coyman, the Associate Director of Trail Operations for the Pacific Crest Trail Association. And we're going to start off uh, throwing a question your way, Togan, which is uh, kind of a, a fundamental question that we often get asked a lot. And sometimes I think maybe there's some misunderstanding about, which is what is the purpose of a PCT long distance permit? Why do we have these things? Um, what's the benefit to, to hikers and the trail and everything else? Yeah, so the Pacific Crest Trail offers the unique experience of being able to travel continuously, obviously from Mexico to Canada through spectacular scenery and diverse landscapes over an extended period of time. And across the length of the trail, permits are required in some, but not all of the wilderness areas and national parks the trail passes through. So some of the basic functions of permits are to help protect the experience of the PCT, whether it's um, allowing for a less crowded experience or reducing recreation related impacts like litter or human waste or protecting the natural setting. Um, and the PCT long distance permit itself serves another function and that it logistically simplifies securing permits for a long distance um, journey by minimizing the number of permits um, you need. So because long distance travel involves extended periods of time and uncertain physical uh, conditions, it can be really hard to predict exactly where you're going to be on a given day in order to secure permits in advance. So the PCT permit allows users to travel continuously without having to leave the trail um, to secure all of the various permits. Thanks, Tobin. That's really informative. So aside from just being a convenience to hikers, which it obviously is, because otherwise you'd have a long list of, of local permits to have to get, um, really, use of the trail has continuously increased, right, over the last several years. I mean, we just see the numbers of people out on the trail and applying for permits going up year over year. So if we didn't have a permit system, um, what could potentially be the impacts on the trail over the long run? You know, if it was just wide open and people could just go wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Yeah, I think the concern is that you would see see those impacts to the visitor experience. You know, the um, the crowding, um, you know, people being less spread out, um, and then those you know those recreation related impacts um, with human waste or litter or campsites expanding, um, and those impacts to the to the natural setting. So the permits really um, help to manage. Some of that and ensure that the experience can continue um, to be what it is for us today into the future. Yep, great points. Yeah, that, that trail experience is definitely uh, special and, and we want to preserve that as much as possible. So Justin, um, tell us a little bit about how the 2021 season, which as I mentioned earlier, starts in just a couple of weeks, is, is going to be different because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, great question, Scott. Um, you know, we simply just don't know how the pandemic is going to progress in the coming weeks and months, and even if long distance travel will be permitted at any given point, California, Oregon or Washington could put stay in orders in effect, which would basically invalidate the long distance permit if travel, if non essential travel is prohibited. Um, if it's not prohibited, which is what we're hoping for, and we obviously hope the, the pandemic is subsiding to some extent for everyone's sake, um, we really urge people to take their safety and that of others um, really seriously this year. And that's going to mean adapting their travel patterns and their plans. And some of the most common things will mean um, resupplying less often, spending less time in towns, um, avoid sharing hotel rooms. You know, oftentimes it's, it's great when you can pile into a hotel room and bring the cost down per person, but not a good idea um, to do that with folks outside of your immediate family. Um, avoiding public transportation, even if it's being offered in some places, 
and uh, hitchhiking as much as possible. And generally speaking, just being more self-reliant this year, which will mean carrying more food and uh, not traveling in groups and not sleeping in close proximity to others. Um, you know, a long distance hiking experience can be really social. And, and that's great. That's wonderful. But if that's the reason you're coming out for a long distance experience this year, we really encourage you to wait until 2022. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I know we've talked a little bit um, at PCTA, Justin, about how in many ways what we're suggesting people do this year is kind of harkens back to the long distance PCT experience of, you know, 15 or 20 years ago when it wasn't all about the town stops, but it was really more about the solitude and being out in wild and scenic places. And as you said, being more self-reliant. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, you know, we've, I think most folks, hopefully most folks have heard this, <laughs> but, you know, being outdoors um, can is so important all the time, but especially during the pandemic. And we were hopeful that Travel on the PCT, whether it's short trips, but especially long distance, can be a safe and responsible use of the trail. But folks should be going out for those purposes of experiencing these rugged, wild, scenic places. Totally makes sense. Yeah, definitely going to be a, a different approach this year to stay safe for sure. So um, we've gotten lots of questions from people on social media and via email and things like that with with people asking about every possible variation on permits and COVID restrictions and things like that. And, you know, one of the most common questions I think um, for you, Togan, is that people often tell us if they have a long distance permit and there is a stay at home order on their, in effect, on their start date, on the date that they actually chose to begin their, their trip, um, and they can't go because of the stay at home order, can they just skip ahead? to like wherever they might likely to be whenever that order is lifted? Yeah, that's a good question. Un unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, the terms of the permit just don't allow that kind of flexibility. And, you know, one of the reasons um, for the, the PCT long distance permit and that it has a specific start date and a specific location is really that intent to protect the resource and spread visitors out along the trail. So if circumstances like a stay at home order don't allow you to comply with the terms of the permit, um, then the permit's no longer valid. And you'd need to go and, um, and try to secure local permits um, where they're required um, along the PCT for the rest of your journey if you wanted to continue. Thanks, Togan, that's, that's helpful. So um, I guess another related question then, Justin, is if I have a permit for a given start date, there are no restrictions, no stay at home orders, anything else to do with COVID on my start date. And I begin my hike, but then I reach some point along the trail where, for example, a particular, I don't know, state park or national forest that the trail passes through may be closed due to COVID. Can I simply skip that area and, and travel north if I'm northbound and pick up the trail again on the other side of that closure? Yeah, Scott, um, this would be the same as when people have to skip an area due to other types of closures. Um, the most common typically being wildfire closures. Um, if you have to skip an area and say you're heading northbound, you skip north, um, you, your permit is still valid and you can continue northbound. And you can even come back and finish that section you skipped later if the closure order has been lifted. The one exception is the Southern Sierra. And as a lot of folks know, that's a really, really popular stretch of the PCT and incredibly popular wilderness areas that see not only a, a lot of long distance use, but a lot of weekend and you know week long backpacking use. Um, so if you do come back there, you can, but you do have to get the local permits. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to know then. So it doesn't necessarily mean the end of your hike, but um, as with everything else, you've got to be aware of where those closures are, you know, at any point during your hike along the trail. Um, that totally makes sense. So um, another popular question that gets batted around on Facebook a lot, Togan, is, well, come on. I mean, does anybody really enforce these permits? I mean, you know, are, is anyone actually going to stop me on the trail anywhere and ask to see my permits? I mean, what's your uh, take on that? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the PCT permit, long distance permit is valid as long as the holder is adhering to the terms and conditions of the permit. And and there are backcountry rangers out on the trail who, who will be checking permits for compliance um, throughout the season. Um, you know, the vast majority of PCT permit holders honor the permit requirements, but if someone doesn't, um, their permit could be invalidated and revoked. Um, an example would be, you know, if a ranger were to check someone's permit and it had a start date at the California and Mexico border of, say, you know, March 25th, and they encounter a ranger in the Sierra on um, March 26th, um, it would be pretty clear that they hadn't adhered to the, the terms of their permit. And in that case, they, um, they may receive a citation and, um, you know, uh, be sent to town to, to to secure a local permit um, and their um, PCT permit would be revoked at that point. Thanks, good to know too. I mean, and sometimes those citations may carry a little fine with them, is that right? So you might not completely get away clean, depending. <laughs> All right, um, so I, one of the, I think, hallmarks of this pandemic over the last year, um, Justin, has been inconsistency, right? I mean, there've been so many different um, uh, sets of guidelines and restrictions and closures coming from so many different levels, whether it's the county or the state or the federal government. Um, so basically, you know, can, what can you tell us about the differences, you know, between state, federal, county, local um, guidelines and orders, and, you know, really how best to know which ones you should pay attention to when you're out on the trail? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good question, Scott. And um, and I I would be dishonest if I didn't say it wasn't confusing to to all of us. Um, but really, um, the important thing is that folks should pay attention to all of the orders. Um, it's a really crucial that folks stay apprised of all federal, state, and local orders related to COVID-19. And typically speaking, the more restrictive order will apply. So if you're traveling through California and there isn't a stay at home order, but perhaps there's a restrictive order in a particular county, you still need to comply with that order as you're passing through. Um, it's going to be really important that folks take this responsibility seriously of staying apprised of the information. Um, that's probably going to mean carrying a smartphone, um, having a backup battery so that you can regularly check um, information as you're traveling on the trail. It might mean having someone who's at home monitoring the situa situation for you. Um, I think it's important too for PCTA or for folks to regularly check PCTA's website. We do uh, serve as a clearinghouse for trail closure information. And, you know, along with trail closures related to wildfire or other um, sorts of natural events, we'll definitely update full blown trail closures um, that are a result of COVID. Okay, so um, last year, as we all know, Togan was a year of um, pretty catastrophic wildfires along the PCT. And as a result, there are many sections of the trail um, that are closed due to um, damage from those wildflower, wildfires, excuse me, in the burn zones. And uh, of course, sometimes there are trail closures for other reasons as well, but obviously the wildfire closures are gonna be a major factor in people hiking the trail this year. Um, what should people do about uh, trail closures like that that don't have specific detours? Um, how do they get around those? Yeah, so as Justin mentioned, um, you know, every PC traveler has PCT traveler has a responsibility to monitor trail closures and, and plan their trip accordingly. Um, PCTA has a great website that's a that's a, a terrific resource for um, for identifying current closure information and um, you know, when there are closures, um, the federal land management agencies work really closely with PCTA to, to try to identify a walking detour whenever it's possible, but sometimes there just isn't a safe way to, to get around a closure. Um, so when there isn't a, a detour, um, you know, we suggest that people arrange for travel around the closure area and, and simply resume their, their hike at the next access point beyond the closure. You know, in a, in a typical year, um, public transit may be an option, but because of the pandemic, um, you know, that's not something um, 
that we can count on in 2021. So this year, more than ever, it'll be really important to be thinking ahead um, when you can and to, to arrange safe travel around, around closures in advance. Thanks, Togan. Yeah, that's that's really helpful. And, and I'm going to ask Justin about this in just a second. But another thing we probably really don't recommend people do is just hitch a ride. Because in this year of the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the things that Justin, uh, I'll ask you about it here in a second. Um, one of the ways to stay safe is obviously avoid, you know, being confined in a closed space like a vehicle with strangers outside your bubble because that could potentially expose you to risk of infection. So along that point then, Justin, um, what are some of the things people can do this year out on the trail to, to really stay safe, you know, during the pandemic? What are some of the, the, the small scale tactics that people can use on the trail? Yeah, great, great question, Scott. Um, I'm going to start by kind of picking up with uh, where Togan left off a little bit about any type of trail closures. Um, the first thing I would say just in general this year, plan ahead, do extra planning to really make sure you know how um, you're going to get around closures. And the reason why I bring that up again is only because Every year, the sections of the PT, PCT closed. Um, to think you're going to get on at mile zero and walk every mile is just not a reality. Every single year, some section is closed for some reason, and that should be part of people's expectations, and they should plan for it. Um, the next thing is really to avoid close contact with other people, especially indoors. Um, a lot of folks um, come out for a long distance walk on the PCT, the AT, other national scenic trails, because it is a wonderfully social experience. Um, but every year there are, you know, there's norovirus, there's flus, there's bugs that spread. And this year, <clears throat> excuse me, this year it's going to be particularly important to really space out and take your safety and that of others really seriously. And it's going to mean, you know, staying outside more often, take zero days on the trail, um, avoid, basically avoid sharing the air, especially indoors with other people. So avoid hitchhiking, um, avoid sharing hotels, um, public transportation, if it's even offered, might not be a good idea, and really limit your time in towns and the potential of spreading the virus to people in communities along the trail. We want folks to have a great time this year, but we really, really want folks to be responsible. Thanks. Yeah, no, that, that's a great point. And it's funny because I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, you know, during a pandemic, there's no safer place to be than out in the middle of the wilderness on a remote mountain trail. And for the most part, that's true. But as you pointed out, the PCT has become an intensely social experience. Um, I look through photos that are sent to us in past years by hikers, and I see dozens, if not hundreds of photos of giant crowds of hikers practically on top of one another, you know, as you said, sharing hotel rooms or crowded together around tables or things like that. And of course, a lot of those photos are during resupply stops in towns. So that's um, to your point, you know, I think trying to minimize the amount of time that that people spend in trail towns is a good thing, you know, as far as is maximizing safety. Well, this has been really you know, great, you guys. Um, oh, go ahead, Justin. Yeah. Did you have a last comment? That's <laughs> Yeah. La last comment. Take this one or leave it. But, you know, I, I really like the way someone um, characterized a PCT long distance hike recently. They said, you know, it's kind of a combination of a wilderness trip and a road trip across three states. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And when I think about that, you know, this year we ought to be nudging on the more on the wilderness trip side of it than the road trip side of it. So, yeah, just limiting that that time in developed places, indoor spaces, et cetera. Yep, our goal is to make it through the 2021 season with zero COVID cases anywhere on the trail. So hopefully that'll happen. Well, Togan and Justin, thanks very much for uh, answering these questions. I'm sure hopefully this will help a lot of our um, a lot of folks in the community that that still have questions about this. Um, it's a little complicated, but um, you know we're all optimistic that people will make responsible choices and and have safe hikes out there. So uh, thanks again, you guys.